Hello and welcome to Where the Living Room Used to Be, a podcast about Rhode Island's music scene. Duke Robillard, RI5. Um, what is or was your favorite Rhode Island record store? Ooh, I had a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> and you can name them well, all if you want. You know, let's this is... <laughs> start now. Let's start today and go backwards. Sure. My favorite record store today in Rhode Island is Round Again Records on Wicked and Street in Providence. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and I've been buying records there since the 1980s, I believe. Maybe even uh, since he's been open, I don't know. He's been open since the seventies or early eighties. But yep. I've been going to that place and buying a major part of my record collection has come from there. Um, okay. Because he stocks everything. He has a full stock of of rock and roll music, uh, popular music. He's got a full stock of jazz, blues, comedy, R and B. You know, uh, like old time pop singers from Nat Cole and, uh, you know, people like that, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, all 50s and 40s era of pop singers. Um, he's just got everything in his store classical music also. And uh, he always has a lot of Christmas music at Christmas time. So I don't know where he gets continually find more records but but he does and <laughs> that's a popular of uh round again records and they he always amazes me and i uh i've got to the point where i bought so many records that now that i'm finding going through my records and finding things that i may never listen to again and i i go and i sell them back to them you know okay uh, as long as they're in good condition you know and uh, so that's my favorite current record store. Um, and then, but in the old days, uh, there was uh, uh, Beacon Record Shops, which I, I believe they had a few different locations. The one I used to frequent was on North Main Street in Providence. I'm talking back in the 70s. Yeah. Maybe, maybe even the 60s. I don't know, because I started buying records in Providence in the late 60s. and. Um, Beacon Record Shop was another one, you know, that just had every kind of music possible. And they were quite large. And, uh, you know, I've got an awful lot of music from them. And also the uh, right down the street from them was Carl's Diggins. And that was Carl Henry's record shop. And Carl Henry was a music promoter and he had a radio show. And uh, he was a DJ, and he promoted black music in in Providence and in Rhode Island. And, uh, you know, he taught me so much and would always recommend the newest blues records coming out. And uh, he really taught me a lot about what, you know, what was worth checking out and, and, you know, kind of guided me as to the best of the new blues music that was coming out and starting back about 1969 on. Wow, yeah. and, uh, it was really important to me. And, and then he, he bought some um, uh, 78 collections from people that he had. And he would keep them under the record bins where the vinyl was. And uh, I would look through them and I would, I would buy lots of stuff that really ended up being a lot of the material that I I started uh, doing in I picked for Roomful of Blues in the early days, so uh, that was very important to me because the only other place I would find seventy eight in Rhode Island would be in uh, second hand stores, which I did go to a lot and find a yeah. lot. Uh, and then there was Lads Music, which there was one on Angel, uh, not Angel. Uh, um, oh, what's the name of the big the college street there on, on the east side? Um, Thayer Street? Or like Thayer that? Street, right. There's one on Thayer, uh, a lad's music. And 
It wasn't a giant store, but they did have everything. You know, they did carry every genre of music. So yeah, at that time, there were a lot of blues records that you could find in Lad's music, which, uh, you know, wasn't always the case in certain, Mm -hmm. you know, department stores, say, that carried music. You know, you couldn't always find blues records there. So those were the the ones that just come to mind offhand. I hope I'm not leaving anything else out that was a big one for me, but those were the, those were the biggest ones. That's cool. Yeah. What is your favorite Rhode Island drink? Like, uh, you know, obviously we have like coffee milk and Dells and awful (laughs) offers and stuff like that. Or you have like a local brewer or anything like that. You want to, um, well, you know, as far as, uh, Non-alcoholic drinks, all of the things you mentioned, are, <laughs> I love. And still yeah. love. <laughs> uh, and uh, as far as Rhode Island brews, when I was young, I used to drink Narragansett beer. Of course, yeah. now we have it again, but it's not made in Rhode Island. So it's kind of not quite the same thing, you know. Yeah. But uh, as far as particular drinks coming from here... I've never uh, taken to Rhode Island wine, although there is some. <laughs> it's never been something I've, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I guess Narragansett beer would probably be the biggest one. I guess now there's lots of craft beers that are made in Rhode Island and yeah. are very good. You know, yeah. I'm not quite up on that. It's a big thing, but it's something that younger people follow more than uh, <laughs> yeah i mean in, in Pawtucket, yeah, there's, there's you know? uh, a ton of breweries uh, like it's kind of become like a craft beer capital right in Pawtucket. so um and uh, yeah and, Narr- and narragansett does have a, a headquarters there so they, they you're right that they don't brew their lager um though i think that they're still trying to move it here um but they do a lot of their their craft beer lines are actually brewed in Pawtucket now so um huh? yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, I know there's a place uh, called the Guild in Pawtucket. Yeah, that, exactly. Uh, yeah, that's where they're headquartered. And they make their own beer. And I have had some really interesting things there that are kind of uh, not, I guess, a beer, but they, they taste more, you know, the fruity, uh, some different yep. kinds of odd combinations, but they're really good. Yeah, yeah. What is your favorite place in Rhode Island? Like, is there a certain uh, park or neighborhood or, um, you know, uh, area of the state that you kind of hold dear or, you know, even your house? I mean, you've got a whole recording studio in your house, you know, so like anything like that. Um, is there there's something that, that kind of stands out that you'd like to, well, to share? Well, you know, I, I just am a guy that loves my home state. I love Rhode yeah. Island in general. Uh, I love the East side. That's always been a place that I've always found just inspiring in terms of being, you know, colleges there that it's, uh, you know, there's always a lot of youthful stuff going on, which I Mm -hmm. think is always interesting. I think, uh, I think I'd always want to live in a college town because uh, I, I don't know, just more happening, you know? Uh, And, um, uh, one thing I really love about Rhode Island, now I grew up in northern Rhode Island in Barville in Harrisville to be specific. And so I grew up in the, in the, it was really rural when I was there. I yeah. mean, it's unbelievably rural. So I like one thing about Rhode Island is if you drive around a lot in Rhode Island, you can still find a lot of very rural areas that are, really interesting you know places like green rhode island and, you know down uh, the southern part of rhode island you yeah. know uh there's just uh you know there's still a lot of really rural area in a place that's you know the size the the tiny size that it is <laughs> yeah and, and a lot of culture in general a lot of mixture of cultures and of course that's been growing that's been deepening as uh as i've grown up i've been watching it but you know 
the, there's always been a lot of Italian culture and Irish and French and Portuguese. And that's been in Rhode Island forever, you know? Mm. Um, so, uh, I just find that all really interesting. Yeah. It's funny. A few years ago, I got an award from the, uh, Gene, Franco American Genealogical Society. I don't know if that's the exact name of the society. The in Woonsocket. In Woonsocket, yes. Yeah. And so they had a, they had a, you know, a, 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 a you know, an induction for several okay. people. I was inducted into their Hall of Fame for, uh, I guess, coming to a certain point of. Uh, cultural notoriety, I guess you could say, you know, being yeah. uh, well known enough for what I do as a uh, Franco-American. I'm, you know, mostly French. I'm three quarters French and I have a quarter Irish in me. And I, I thought that was really nice that they, uh, you know, that they uh, paid recognition to that fact. Yeah, that's, uh, well, that's, uh, that's really cool. You know, those kind of things in Rhode Island, uh, the fact that it's a small state makes a lot of that stuff, uh, you know, happen because there's a lot going on in this small state. But I love it here. I mean, the only other place I ever lived was for nine years I lived in Louisville, Kentucky, which I liked because it was about the size of Providence. Uh, yeah. it, it, there was enough going on that it was interesting. and not too much. It wasn't like too big a city, you know, uh -huh. so, well, but I did miss Rhode Island and I'm happy to spend uh, my life here now. Although yeah. my wife thinks we, we might move to Florida at some point, like the rest of the, <laughs> what are they called? Snow bunnies or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, as, as we're talking, it's, you know, uh, probably like close to like single digits outside. So, uh, yeah. identifiable, you know. <laughs> um, well, I've I learned since the pandemic to, to stay inside because I'm in, for a few different reasons, I'm in the very high-risk group of people. So being that I haven't been, uh, haven't got the vaccine, I ha I've gotten used to staying in 99% of the time, you know. Yeah. I don't, don't really leave my house too much. Yeah. Well, again, it's cool that you're uh, taking care of uh, still creating and, and, you know, like your productive output is, is still staying up, which is uh, um, really great to see, you know, so. Well, I'm happy. you know, I'm, I, I'm the kind of person, if I don't, if I don't do something creative, I start going crazy. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it's, I lost my ability to play guitar for about a year and a half. Uh, and when that happened, um, I took up painting, uh, and I, and I did it for about eight hours a day cause I was just not able to play and, and uh -huh. it was driving me completely crazy. So I had to have something that was, you know, something that was artistic or yeah. cultural going on, or I just couldn't take it. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. I can't stop doing stuff. Uh, so yeah, I'd, I'd actually, I, I didn't know that. I'd love to check out some of the paintings that you did. So um, is there a place to see them? Are they? I don't, well, I've had like three shows now. Oh, okay. I do photography too, but I haven't done that as much lately. But I've had a photography show and a couple uh, shows of my paintings. And uh, I don't have anything planned. I got to get back. I haven't had time for much painting lately. Um, I did have one last year. It was uh, in oh, okay. Westerly, the West, the gallery that's in the Westerly Library, with another artist, Linda Peduzzi. We both. Uh, um, my my work is abstract. Um, I developed an interest interest in abstract painting. My brother is a a very well-known Rhode Island painter and has been making his li living doing it for God, 60 years now. Uh, he paints uh, a lot of um, ships and, uh, uh, you know, what do you call it? Nautical scenes, you know, okay. but he also does paint uh, 
landscapes too. Mm-hmm. And uh, he he's just fabulous. I get a lot of inspiration from his work, but I take the opposite approach because uh, I started getting interest, interested when I started playing in Europe. I'd go to all the museums in all the big cities and I started yeah. being able to view the masterworks of each genre, you know, from the old masters through the, you know, the early 20th century uh, abstract artist, you know, and uh, I really got attracted to the abstract thing, you know, so uh, seeing I didn't have training in in proper drawing, uh, I I started doing abstract, and you know, I really, I really love it. I've sold, sold quite a few of my paintings. I got to get back to it. So I plan to do that more this winter. Uh, Fantastic. Between recording, you know. Yeah. Well, I will uh, do a better job keeping my ears to the track and then check out some of these shows. Yes, I'll, back. I'll, I'll uh, open my website if I have another show. I probably, excellent. you know, probably will when I build up more new paintings. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite Rhode Island pizza? Oh, well, it changes from time yeah, to okay. time. You know, for the last 40 years, I've been a big fan of Caserta pizza. Yeah. And still am. At the moment, my favorite pizza is Rosa Mia. Oh, out in uh, Cranston, I believe it is. Uh, I think it's Cranston. Um, and it's part of a restaurant, like they have a, a pizza to go place in the front. And then the restaurant, I keep forgetting because. I haven't had a chance to eat at the restaurant yet. Mm-hmm. And I, it's, if you look it up, you'll find it. Yeah. The restaurant seems to be unbelievably fabulous, but I found out about it after COVID had started. So I haven't gone there, uh, but I do get their pizza frequently. Uh, Rosa Mia. And it is just unbelievable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really, what what kind of style is it? Is it? Um, well, like, they have a few, they have a few different kinds, but just the regular crust, which is a thick crust pizza, okay. is the one that I I prefer. It's uh, we usually get it with uh, sausage and peppers and sauce and you know cheese. Yeah, and uh, it's ooh, it's really really <laughs> special. But the crust is quite different than anybody else. That's excellent. Um. And uh, last question for you. What is your favorite Rhode Island event? Well, these days, I really enjoy the music that they have in Slater Park. And uh, I love that event. Uh, we've gone to that several years. And, and, you know, I think for any, any state to be, to have a good symphony orchestra and to be able to have that, to go hear that live. There's nothing yeah. like that. I mean, that's, that is the, the ultimate music to hear a, a full orchestra play live to mm-hmm. me. I love it. I love it. And I love the, uh, I love the Rhode Island symphony. Yeah. That is a, a, a really special event. Um, well, Duke, thanks again. Uh, this is really cool to get to talk to you and then learn, uh, so much more about you and and, uh, and just get to talk about the state. It's awesome. Well, it's been nice talking to you about it, too. I am a lonesome hobo Without family or friends Where another man's life might begin That's exactly I've tried my hand at bribery, blackmail and deceit. Yeah, I've served time for everything except begging on the street. Well, once I was rather prosperous, there was nothing. I did lack I have 14 karat gold in my mouth and silk upon my back but I did not trust my brother 
I carried him to blame Which led me to my fit of doom To wander off in shame You wind up on this road 